the ideas, procedures, and suggestions contained within this podcast are not intended as a substitute for consulting with a medical professional. All matters regarding your health and fitness require medical consultation and supervision. Welcome to the Warrior Wellness Podcast, a podcast for military members, veterans, and first responders focusing on fitness, health, nutrition, and biohacking. Our mission with this podcast is to introduce America's heroes to lifestyle habits and hacks that will help them live healthier, happier lives, and in turn, be fit enough to continue their support of their communities and country. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Warrior Wellness Podcast. I am sitting down with Sergeant First Class Marcus Wallace. Marcus is a Sergeant First Class in the Army. He is a certified personal trainer, a U.S. Army Master Fitness Trainer, and a former college pro athlete. So we'll talk about all those things. He is actually also a Fireteam Whiskey online fitness trainer. So he is our resident expert on all things Army Fitness um, and the ACFT, which is the brand new Army Fitness Test. Marcus provides training programs to military service members and their families to help provide clarity in a confusing fitness world. Marcus is passionate about helping his clients attain consistency and overcome excuses. Marcus is a hybrid trainer, believes you should be strong, athletic, functional in order to look and feel good. Marcus's workouts are intense with short rest periods and combined strength training with cardio for optimal results. Marcus's workouts combine body weight and equipment training, and his motto is, you get out what you put in. Marcus has been featured on the cover of Elite Training Magazine, muscleandstrength.com, and on the U.S. Army social media pages. And you can sign up to have Marcus as your own online personal trainer to work with you one-on-one every single day on the Fireteam Whiskey app, meet with you and do coaching calls, put you on a fitness and nutrition plan, and basically kind of be on you one-on-one for 30 days at a time. You can go to fireteamwhiskey.com, go to the online personal training uh, link, or you can just follow the link in the show notes here to sign up with him. Marcus is definitely an expert in all things fitness. He knows what the heck he is doing. So I hope you enjoy our interview with Marcus Wallace. Well, thank you, Marcus, for being on the Warrior Wellness Podcast, and I'm so excited to have you on because you definitely are the resident expert on all things um, military fitness and especially Army fitness, since you are an Army Master Fitness trainer, and um, a lot of our fire team members are currently in the military or have been um, uh, previously in the military, and we have the new ACFT. Um, that's just started up. So we'll talk a little bit about that. But let's go ahead and um, talk a little bit first about your um, Army um, career. You're obviously in uniform if you're watching this on the video. So um, yeah. it, Marcus is currently an Army recruiter. So can you just give us a summary of your Army career thus far? Yes, I've been in the Army 22 years now um, as an occupation, as a chemical operations specialist. And I've been stationed all around the world, been in Hawaii, Korea, stationed in Georgia and and Texas. And then my time in the military has been great because obviously I spent four years playing all army basketball. And that was a tremendous experience where I got for four years to travel around the world and it's concentrated playing basketball, representing the army and representing the United States. So my career has been great, 22 years. Obviously it's coming to an end coming this year, but it's been a great 22 years. So you're gonna gonna, um, retire this year? Yes, this is the, this is yep. I just dropped the paperwork. Oh about wow! A week ago. Congratulations, that's huge. That's great. Yes. So you just touched upon the fact that you actually were um, on the Army um, basketball team, which is such an unusual experience. I mean, you don't you hardly ever hear about professional athletes, you know, being in the military and on the military teams. Um, can you talk about your career as a professional basketball player and how that kind of laid the foundation for your current fitness philosophies? Yes, because um, growing up, like my main purpose, well, my main goal was to be in the NBA. So I dedicated, I dedicated my um, early years, kind of becoming a better basketball player, playing, playing basketball, training the whole time. Then I got a, a scholarship to play um, college basketball. First, I played at Southern Idaho, 
Then I played at San Diego State. But then after about, after I finished with school, um, I tried to go play overseas. It didn't work out the way I wanted to. So I joined the Army for um, for two years, two and a half years. And then while playing, um, being in the Army for two and a half years, I got out the Army and the break and then went to go play professional ball in Argentina. I played in Argentina, Spain, and Australia. And how and how the basketball stuff laid my foundation for fitness is that I've always had coaches that always um, um, drilled in my head that you want to train and practice so when a game comes, the game seems real easy, you'll never be tired. So I took them same principles. So when I work out and train, I train twice as hard as most people would. So whenever I, if I would do a, a PT test, the ACF, anything like that, it would be so easy for me. So I, I believe in giving 100% every day I'm in the gym. So I look at the gym as practice. So every day I'm in the gym, 100% because I know it's going to pay off in the long run. So I just transfer all um, athletic principles I had from my coaches and just transferred over to my working out and training my clients. Yeah, I love that. I love the way you kind of put that. It's it's kind of practice for kind of the big event. And, you know, even if you're not in the military and you're not doing a fitness test, um, I, I find this as well when I work with clients is that they're not working out to intensity. You know, they're, they're checking yeah. the box, you know, getting the workout done, right? But they're not working out to intensity. So when I have them track their heart rates and I see their heart rates during their workouts, I'm like, whoa, like you barely even broke a sweat. Like, you know, kind of what's yeah. the point if you're not going to be pushing yourself to, to you know, to develop, um, you know, that fitness, that cardiovascular fitness, that muscular fitness, so even if you're not training for an actual fitness test or to, you know, uh, a big basketball game or something like that, um, that's key is that that focusing on that intensity when you are taking the time to work out. Yeah, that's what I like about putting together like workout programs is like it's always giving you a goal to reach to, um, towards because obviously being a, being a, um, in the army we travel a lot of places and I like, I go back and visit places I've been before and I go to the same gyms. I see the people working out the same time for the same amount of time that they always do not get any results because it's like you said, it's just, they just check in a box. So I feel like you get a good program, you track your progress. And it's always, that's what I love about fitness is that you can always set goals, no matter if you want to get faster, stronger, leaner, there's always something to reach towards. So that's what I, I preach a lot to my clients. Let's, let's get a goal. And let's do short-term goals to get there. Yeah, yeah, I like it. Yeah, I love that. There's always something to do. So even if, even if you are pretty fit, you know, like you and I are still pretty fit, but we mm. have little goals that we're working on. You know, maybe shaving one percent, two percent off your body fat. Maybe you know, getting you know a couple more inches on your biceps. You know, there's always something they can be working towards. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. So um, can you describe what your current fitness and nutrition philosophies are? I believe in doing um, the 90-10 rule and what that is, eat clean 90% um, of the time. And then you can um, have fun and then go outside the diet 10% of the time. And then the way I accomplish that, I, I do the, the three by three rule. So what I do, three solid meals a day and three shakes a day. So just to keep it simple, not the... Um, so I just um, meal prep my three solid meals and then have my three shakes on deck. And that's that's how I keep it. And then one day, maybe one day out the week or maybe depending on what I'm training for, then I might go out to eat eat something that's off that, that diet. So that's how I do it. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. It Keep it simple. That's That's key. I mean, I think a lot of people when they first start with a nutrition plan, they get very overwhelmed. It's like, I have to learn yes, how to yes. cook these new things and I've got to, you know, I, I've never even had quinoa. I don't even know how to spell that, you know, <laughs> so it gets complicated, <laughs> doesn't it? Yeah. And it really, it mm -hmm. really, you could keep it very simple. You know, it may not be the most exciting meals in the world for sure, but, you know, I think the transition um, from, you know, from the way you see it is, you know, your food is fuel. So you want to have clean fuel, you know, just like for your car, you know, that you're sitting in, you yeah. want to have clean fuel, right? So it doesn't have to be exciting every day. You can take that 10, that 90, 10, that 10% and have something exciting, you know, and, and enjoy it. And it'll be different, but you know, that from the nine to five, that 90%, you know, just making sure it's just simple and clean, you know, it doesn't have to be that complicated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's just to try to keep it simple. Cause when I first started out, I was like, like overthinking it. And then I just came up with something that, 
And then I tried all the um, all the fad diets out there. But then I thought to myself, the best is just do something that's more attainable for the long term. So that's what that's why I came up with the the three by three. That's what I do. So it's been where it works out great because I can still if there's an event coming up, um, I may be a more stricter because I know I'm going to eat bad for the event or just do it like that. So that's what's been working out great for me. Yeah. And for most people, I put on it, too. Yeah. Awesome. Can I ask you um, what what shakes are you currently using? I know I always switch it up, you know, but um, what what do you what are you doing right now? Well, I do like the um, like when I have my shakes, it depends on like the go by you obviously use whey protein and I mix like like different fruits and berries. And then sometimes I even throw oatmeal in, in, into my shakes and grind it up. Or sometimes I just buy the um the ones that's already the RTDs ready to drink ones too. Mm -hmm. But mainly I do it mainly is just on whey protein and um and um just mixed fruit, anything like that. And I use your um the fire team whiskey ones because you send me a whole bunch of packages. So I use that a lot too. So yeah, awesome. Yeah. I'm into um right now I'm doing egg protein. Doing egg protein with the fire team whiskey uh shake. So the fire team whiskey shakes has whey protein in it and MCT. So um and then I add a little uh little chocolate little packet of chocolate element um electrolytes in it and it's just like a delicious oh. chocolate milkshake i'm gonna i'm gonna get i'm gonna try that out then yeah yeah <laughs> excuse me so um let's kind of talk it a little bit about the the military uh controversy i know you and i go back and forth on social media a lot about this we're both yeah. very passionate about it yeah, um yeah, so yeah. <laughs> let's talk about that a little bit so there's a lot of controversy if you're not aware and you're listening to this and you're not currently in the military um let me just give you the lowdown um you know with covid and um you know it, all, basically all the branches stopped doing fitness tests you know for covid which was understandable, you know, to, to, um, you know, not have that, that contact and do these big fitness events. Um, and, you know, there was an access issue for, you know, military members being able to train up and go to the gym. But Marcus and I know that, you know, that's not an excuse and you can train irregardless of the fact if you have access to a gym or not, you could still be very fit and not ever touch a weight, you know, and you can do body weight workouts and, and be very fit. But um, the military used that as an excuse. Um, so now, you know, we're a, a over a year into this, about a year into this, um, we're seeing some of the military um, branches, uh, they're kind of doubling down on their commitment to not um, hold people to these standards, uh, to include the Air Force, I think it was, um, they completely uh, stopped uh, and com completely got rid of their body fat standards. So um, you're seeing this happen. Oh, and during COVID, they stopped doing the, the weight and, and the body fat testing as well, you know, claiming because of that lack of access to gyms. So what do you think about all this, Marcus? I mean, I, it's very frustrating. I think it's crazy to me. Because when you wear the uniform, and if, if you're in the military or law enforcement, or anything like that, I feel like you should be one of the elite. You should set the standard for everybody to look up to. So no matter what, if we don't have access to gyms, like I said, we mo we do most of our PT outdoors anyway. So this should be really no excuse. It's just, I think it's basically what, it, what it's coming down to. It seems like the military is mirroring what our regular society is, is that we live in a society where a, a lot of people are not fit and healthy anymore. So and then we're bringing people into our forces like that. And then with us not holding them to, to a certain standard is basically um, bringing our force down, in, in my opinion. Yeah. And so, and so do you think that the, that's the main reason I, the military is kind of being realistic about the fact that there, there really are not enough healthy and fit bodies to, to enlist in the military anymore. And they have to lower their standards in order to have more bodies in the military. I think, I think so, because like me being a recruiter, I run into a lot of, uh, we went to a lot of people that's, that we're trying to get, that wants to get in, but they don't fit, fit the, um, the, the, the body fight um, composition. They can't, they can't do it, um, the simple little fitness test that we have before they coming in. So I think that's the reason why. And plus it's just that, to be honest with um, social media, everybody has have more of a bigger voice. So I think 
people just kept complaining, complaining, complaining about it. So once once you get enough people complain about it, you get the right person to listen to it. Yeah. So that that's that's yeah. that's how I think about it. Yeah. 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 And that and the the sad the really sad state of affairs about that is you know you have to think about and I know we are so far away now time wise from nine eleven, but you and I were in uniform when nine eleven happened, right? So mm -hmm. it's like we forgot that that happened and. Do you think our enemies out there are are using not, no access to gyms as an excuse to not train and be fit and be ready to fight? Of course yeah, not. Um, no, they're not. They're not, not, not. <laughs> right? I mean, it's not it, not it's wrong. crazy to think that you know that there's this strange standard of our enemy is not is not lowering their standard, but we are. And you can't go into a war zone and and say, well, I'm only an admin person. You know, you can't shoot at me. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's no, the most ludicrous no. thing that like to think about. And especially with guerrilla warfare. And these are the types of engagements that we're involved in now. It's not just like, you know, the infantry is in the front and there's a front line. There's a specific war zone and that's it. And that's where they fight and nothing else happens. It's not like that anymore. It doesn't matter what your job is in the military. You could literally, you know, be attacked anywhere you're at. So even even on a, a military base in the U.S., you know, so that's the that's the reality. Mm -hmm. You know, you had the active shooter there. Um, at, was it Fort Hood who had that a, a few years back? Yeah, Fort Hood. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah, I was the reality. During that time too. Yeah, exactly. That's the reality we live in. We have enemies here in our domestic territories who are planning these events and you can't just say well oh i'm only a pencil pusher you know i i you know you can't shoot at me you you're you know i'm i'm i i can't run anymore you know that's kind of ridiculous so it, it's just it's just the mm -hmm. wrong way of doing things it's, we're going down the wrong path and i i anticipate we're going to have some very very bad consequences um, based on these policies and these these moves they're making in the last couple of years on the the level of fitness and um, lowering those body standards, body fat standards as well. Yeah, I, I think so. I, I think so too because even like you run into people like I run into some people in the forces now. And they seem like it's like not normal. They, they they make it seem like like why are you working out so hard? Why are you working out so crazy? No, like that, I'm like, cause we're in the, we're in the military. We supposed to be fit. We supposed to be, cause I, I believe I'm come from I'm from the um era where I think that you when you wear the uniform, you supposed to when you walk by people are like, wow, that that soldier looks good in that uniform. He looks like he's super fit. He like he can save our lives. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. that's the mob mentality, but I'm yeah, exactly. So that's the mentality. I, yeah, yeah, and it, it it's it does, and it it kind of. You know, if you're a civilian and you see somebody in uniform and they're a very overweight and they're sloppy and they're schleppy and they just look like they're unhealthy, you kind of raise your eyebrow and you go, ah, that person's supposed to defend me? Like, I don't have I mean, any I've kind of confidence. I've seen, <laughs> I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen, especially being out here in recruiting. <laughs> exactly. And yeah, and and it, it, there's also kind of a you know with with the millennials and the the, the generation, the people you, that you're recruiting, right? There's there's a difference mm -hmm. in mindset. Um, it's it's less about um, earning it and you know earning your keep and and discipline and you know and working very hard for a long time to earn a specific place in society, right? That's what we were taught. Our generation was taught, right? You know, it's like, mm -hmm. yeah, you're going to, you're going to do some shit jobs and, and scrub some toilets and, and get yelled at. And, and, you know, and kind of <laughs> yeah. nowadays, like the kids like just think, well, I, I'm going to just graduate college and, and be making $250,000 a year. It's like, who are you? Like, you didn't earn that. Like you haven't done anything yet. Like, <laughs> Go ahead and go scrub some toilets for a while and, and earn your place and get up there, right? So, and I, I feel that as well, you know, working with, with Fireteam Whiskey and people who join and they say they want to join the military, 
but they don't say with their behavior that they want to join the military. Their expectation is, well, you know, I'll just go to boot camp and they'll just somehow magically, I'm going <laughs> to turn into yeah. a soldier. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm not willing to do any work up into that moment. Yeah. Cause we get, um, like I've run into people that have come up, come to our office and like, I want to join the army. I want to be a, a ranger. I want to go airborne. <laughs> they want to do all this. They want to do all this high speed stuff. And really, they really have no, they have no clue of like, of, of how to work out there. They, they're not in any type of shape to be doing that. And we, one thing good about our station, we do take them, we do help them go from zero. We do do a lot of like workouts and training with them before they go. So coming from, coming from the station I'm at, most of the, most of our guys come out prepared because we actually put the time, put the time in. I kind of spearheaded that a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah that's awesome. Do, that's, that's <laughs> so funny. Yeah. Cause that's the equivalent. Like I'm just going to join the military and all of a sudden I'm going to be like in the Delta force and like, it's just going to magically yeah. happen. It's like, no, that's not the way it works. guys. Do. You're 60 pounds overweight. Yeah. Like it's going to be hard enough for, to get you to do two push ups. Like you think you're going to be a Delta yeah. force. Okay. Yeah, so crazy. let's go, let's move on to the other controversial topic, the ACFT. So the brand new ACFT, the Army um, Fitness Test, the Army Combat Fitness Test was scheduled to roll out last year. Um, it was delayed. It was There was a lot of delays because of COVID um, and, and some other issues. And then currently, I think it's under review. You'll you'll have to kind of give, give us an update since you are an Army Master Fitness Trainer and you have more information mm -hmm. than I do. Um, I know that the, art, the first argument was the soldiers didn't have access to gyms for a long time. And then um, the second argument now is about the fact that they feel like the test isn't fair to especially female soldiers. Um, and so I know that there was something going on in Congress and they were trying to stop the ACFT altogether. Um, and there was uh, some objections about, you know, feeling like it could cause injury, et cetera. Again, going back to the argument of, I love the ACFT because I think for the first time ever, they finally came up with a fitness test in the army anyway, that really did mimic battlefield types of movements. Yeah. And yeah. they all made sense. Every part of the ACFT made sense to me. And so to, to now see that they're trying to pause it or stop it um, because of you know risk of injury, you know, again, we're in the military. What do you think is happening out in the battlefield? Like, oh, I'm not going to jump over this wall and pull up my own body weight because I'm afraid I'll get injured. Well, the enemy behind you shooting at you is going to kill you. So what's, you know, you can't stop these movements and these physical movements because you're afraid of injury. You got to do what you got to do and you have to be fit enough in order to do that. So what, what do you think? What's the update and what, what's your um, view on these things? Oh, well, like you said, like the ACFT, yeah, I like it better because it shows you, it's more making more all around fitter and more functional. Um, the update, but the, the reason why they, like you said, the first time they stopped is because of the COVID. People were complaining because to do the ACFT, you have to have the heck, the, the dead, um, hex bar for the deadlifts mm -hmm. and all this different type of equipment. So they held it back for that. And then when, when they decided to um, bring it back up, there was getting a lot of complaints and from all the testing, a lot of females were failing the leg tuck. That's what it came down to. So that's the event. A lot of them didn't have the upper body strength or the core strength to actually do one. So like I was part of the test group when we, when we did that for her. They, they brought different people, TDY in from all around the country, different units and test them. And 85% of the females failed the, um, failed the, um, the leg tuck. So, so then that's when, that's when they um, decided to get Congress involved and they're going to end an outside source to basically investigate or not, I don't know if you call it investigate or look into it to see if it's fair because the way it was, the way it was saying, if you can't pass the um, ACFT, they're going to try, they're going to try to um, put you out. And then they, a lot of people thought that was unfair, so they figured that there's ways that we we need to look into if this test is even, even um substantial for people to take. But yeah. I feel like if you, with the right, with the proper training and stuff like that, it's really ACFT is um I like it because um it's, it, it's you have to be more because the old PT test I feel like you can manipulate, you could be, you don't have to be strong. You don't have to be you don't have to be mobile and all that stuff like that. You could just just train and do some push ups and sit ups and two mile run. But can you can you deadlift? Can you pick up somebody, throw them over your shoulder, and take them over the take them across the battlefield? So, well, that that's what that's what I like about the new ACFT. But what it comes down to is that really the event that was a lot of people were failing when it, if they did fail the ACFT was the leg tuck. 
So a lot of people really, a lot of people couldn't really, for us doing push-ups and sit-ups for, for so long, I guess they're not used to doing the actual pull-up stuff, even though it's not a full pull-up, but a lot of okay. people um, were struggling with the, the leg tuck. Yeah, A, and it's so, not even a full pull-up, which is, I mean, yeah, <laughs> it's not even a full pull-up. Uh, do you think it's just it's just a training failure? It really is just a training failure yeah, because if yeah, you train for it for that event, you can do it. You know, if you spend a little time in the gym doing pull ups, you you can you know how many I'm OK, let me just say I'm 40. Uh, I'm a 41 year old female. OK, mm -hmm. 41 years old. These ladies, a lot of them are 10, 15 years younger than me. Right. I yeah. can I can yeah. do right now off the bat if I go over to a pull up bar, probably uh, I think the last time I did them they were about I did twelve. Oh, that's 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 good. I that's would good. pass with flying colors, but yeah, it's, all it's, it's, it, it's because I train. You know, yeah. it's because I train for them. It it really is just a matter of knowing what the event is, knowing how to do it properly, and then training up for it. You got to do the work. Yeah, the, but the problem the problem is the um a lot of the complaints didn't even come a lot from the um the new the new soldiers coming in is a lot is a lot of the um the older soldiers that stuck in their ways they like mm -hmm. you have you have some you have some people that love the ACFT then you have some people that's been in for like 12, 15, so many years they're like oh why are we switch it to this and lot you know it's just it's just the, um they feel like it was too difficult a lot of people. Like I said, when they did have um, troubles, it was the leg tuck. So that was the the main event. They tried. They were talking about um, if you can't do leg tuck, you hold you do a plank. You hold yourself in a in a plank for two minutes. But all that stuff got nixed because they they said we're gonna put a hold to it right now and we're gonna reevaluate everything right now. So so right now you're not you won't. So right now until next year, you won't even get evaluated on any type of fitness um test while you're in the, while you're in the army. Insane. I mean, Which I think it's, it's crazy. <laughs> it's just an insane. I I had so much hope when they came out with the ACFT. I was like, yes, this is finally. You know, yeah. there's an actual yeah. fitness yeah. test that mimics battlefield movements that you cannot just train for two weeks before the test and pass. You know, this really is a a very fair evaluation of your fitness level and your ability to do. Um, the movements that you need to do while in combat, because isn't that the bottom line for every single person, irregardless of what their opinion is, every single person who wears that uniform needs to be battle ready. I mean, that is the bottom line. So, you know, I, yeah. I think that, that we get just got so complacent over the years with this, this very poor fitness test and people, like you said, got kind of stuck in their ways and they were able to do very minimal effort and pass and be called fit a fit soldier even though they really weren't and let's you know and let's not pretend yeah. that they were because i mean we had i remember in the military we had people in my my first unit finance unit and they'd smoke like three packs of cigarettes a day they had these huge beer bellies they were overweight but, you know, they they would start running two weeks before a fitness test and, and eke out the bare minimum. And then right after the run, they're out there <laughs> smoking as many cigarettes as yeah, they possibly yeah, could and yeah. throwing up. And I mean, it's like I used to call it the shit show because like, <laughs> it was the most embarrassing mm -hmm. um, display of just poor fitness, you know, every year when we had our fitness test because you know, they obviously weren't fit, you know, but they were able to eke out and get that, that pass that go. So, um, I was so excited when they had the ACFT, but now who knows what's going to happen to it. Yeah, I know. That's why, that's why I'm kind of curious to see what I, I'm thinking that they still going to, um, they still going to do it. They just have to, it's going to end up modifying the leg tuck or do some alternate events or something more. But hopefully it'll come up with a resolution um, soon, though. Yeah. But I think that's Cause now, a, cause now, I think that event is key, and I would hate to see it go away. Because, because of the fact that you may have to lift your own body weight up and over something, mm -hmm. right? I mean, that's the movement. That's yeah. the mimic, right? You need to get yourself up and over something. Yeah. You need to have good core strength. You need to have good upper body strength. So what's going to happen if you're on a battlefield... 
and you're trying to get to safety and you've got to climb over something and you can't lift your own body weight. Yeah, you won't fail. You're, mm -hmm. you're, yeah. you're dead. I mean, and is it really worth the exchange of you, you not spending some time in the gym and doing some damn pull-ups? Like, I mean, really that's, <laughs> and losing some weight. So you're not having to pull up so much weight. I mean, that's the other issue. Yeah, sure. If you're 60 pounds overweight, yeah, it's pretty damn hard to do a pull-up. I mean, if I was wearing a weight vest with 60 extra pounds on me, I'd struggle to, to do a pull-up too. So, you know, maybe getting to losing some of that body fat, you know, training with Marcus Wallace and getting, yeah, get, exactly. <laughs> shedding some of that body fat would be a solution. Yeah. It's just the, um, they, they, the army, they did do a program on where they, they sent like, like conditioning coaches and they sent like all kind of um all kind of fitness experts out to units to test the units out but the problem with that was that they were only um they only got them to train the people during the pt hours so it's kind of hard to go through the, the training for each each event in just a, a one hour when you have like right. 20 30 people out there at one time so they did try that that didn't work out too well as far as i've seen yeah hmm. okay all right so um uh, moving on with this uh, interview, so we talked about the controversial stuff, but let's talk about, um, for those listening out there who've been struggling with weight loss, which we know that's a majority of people in the United States, so th I think the latest statistics I've seen are, um, you know, over 75% of Americans are either overweight or obese, so, um, mm -hmm. so most likely if you're listening to this, you're in that category statistically. So what would, what would be your kind of top three pieces of advice you would give somebody who's, who's in that category? Um, um, the first thing, the first thing, number one thing um, I would say is a set a goal, like have a set a goal with a bunch of short-term goals and because obviously short-term goals equal long-term goals. So come up with it, get with somebody that can help you plan out like where you want to be and how you want to get there, that that would be the first advice. And then um, um, number two, number two would be patient because a lot of people like um, a lot of people would be if they don't get results or they don't lose the weight, if they don't lose like the 20, 30 pounds overnight, they get frustrated. So just be patient because obviously you probably didn't gain the weight overnight because you put on the extra weight through time and time. So give yourself, give yourself, be patient with yourself, and it'll come. And just um, and then. The third thing I would say, just be passionate and be, um, just be focused and then, um, yeah, just be, yeah, just be focused and, um, just have fun with it. That would be my top three things about, um, um, getting in shape. And then another thing is if you're, nothing I would say, if you're a person, like I've run to a lot of people, they know they're not, if you're not a self-starter, if you know that you need help, that's why we could like apps like this, like fire team whiskey, get with a trainer to, um, to jumpstart you, to jumpstart you. Cause a lot of people, um, um, they want to get in shape, but they're not willing to invest in themselves. If you you have to invest something, either your time or your money, just to start off at least. Because if you know if you're not a person that can't motivate yourself, you need to hire a trainer. Get with a trainer that's going to help you get there. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. So you've created several fitness programs, and you continue to do that. Um, Shred Twenty is your program that is exclusively offered by Fire Team Whiskey. Can you talk about Shred Twenty mm -hmm. and what that's all about? Oh, Shred 20 is a, is a program I came up with because what's the, the, the two excuses that most people come up with why they can't um, train is a, no three excuses. They don't have the money or equipment to be in shape. They don't have the time or like I said, you don't have equipment. So Shred 20 is a 20 minute, 20 minute day program. All, all you have to do is invest 20 minutes of your time, um, six days a week, no equipment, all body weight exercises. And it's, what's good about it is different training styles. So you'll never be bored. We do like time fitness, we do um, every minute on a minute. We do all type of training styles so you won't get bored, no equipment, no excuse. And what's good about it is 20 minutes to 20 minutes of your day and then you're done with it and you'll get great results. But the 20 minutes is, is gonna be intense, but you're gonna love the results though. Yeah, I love the Shred 20 workouts. It is so much fun. It is painful it but it's quick i mean it is over in a flash you're suffering you're like man this sucks and then it's over 
And you're like, wow, yeah, that was, yeah, it, it did. It did suck. It was hard, but it's over now. And it, I love how you switched it up. Like every workout is just different. Um, so, you know, one day you're doing an AMRAP, you know, one day you're doing an EMOM. So you're always doing something different. So you never get bored. It's all different moves. You don't need any equipment. Um, I've done the shred 20, um, program a two or probably two or three times now. And it's a very popular one on the fire team whiskey app. So, um, it's re a really fun introduction to high intensity intervals. Um, and I, I can definitely, um, recommend it highly. And also, of course, to work with Marcus one-on-one um, -on -one, um, doing online personal training where he's working with you one-on-one -on -one every single day for 30 days. He's putting you on a specific fitness plan. You're going to do his workout videos. You're going to um, do the eating plan that he assigned you. And most important thing is he's going to hold you accountable to your goals and he's going to hold you accountable to what you committed to. So, you know, you're not wasting each other's time. You're not wasting your money. You're actually going to get get out what you put in. Oh, I said it. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> that's by the way. That's Marcus's kind of motto: is you get out what you put in. So he is going to hold you accountable to that. So um, you can definitely expect that from Marcus working with you as his online personal trainer. Do you want to add anything to that? Anything additional that that? Um, you, what people would expect when they sign up to work out with you as their online personal fitness trainer? Yeah, this is, basically when I like, like basically you, um, um, you nailed it right on the head. Basically when you work out with me, you're going to get um, some intense, but you're going to get some great workouts, great results, and you're going to get some person that's, that's very passionate about it. And then my main thing is to help you reach whatever goal you want. So you um, work with me, I'm guaranteed I'm going to give you my 100% and we're going to make sure that you get um, to where you have, wherever you need to be. If you're trying to get stronger, lose weight, be more athletic, um, anything like that, um, I'm going to train for you because I, I guarantee you that I'm going to give you everything that I got and I'm going to make sure that you get there. Awesome. Yeah. So thank you, Marcus, for joining us on the Warrior Wellness Podcast. I really appreciate it. And um, all of the links to sign up to do um, the Shred 20 workouts or work one-on-one -on -one personally with Marcus as your online fitness trainer. So you don't have to live where he lives. He can work with you online. He can have phone calls with you. So um, no excuses. You can get it done even if you don't live near him. Yes. Thanks for having me. Thanks so much for joining us for another awesome episode of the Warrior Wellness Podcast. Make sure to subscribe to us wherever you listen to us on any podcast platform or on our YouTube channel. Just search for Fire Team Whiskey or the Warrior Wellness Podcast and leave us a review while you're there. If you screenshot your review and send it in an email to info at fireteamwhiskey.com with your mailing address, we'll send you a little thank you gift for taking the time for leaving us a review.